Hey guys, this is Logan, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my second Vision Tech project for 2019, well I guess it's my first for 2019, but my second for the 2018-2019 school year. So basically what I wanted to accomplish this time was to learn some more complex skills in organic 3D modeling within Blender. And if you've seen some of my previous projects, you'll, you'll know I've worked with Blender before, but you might have noticed that my models were fairly cartoony and simplistic. And I wanted to have a wide range of modeling skills, so I decided to try and learn some more complicated ones. And the overall final product I wanted to build was a organic model in Blender using the skills I learned, starting with some concept art. And this is actually the concept art that I found. If, if you see, it's, it's a fish. It's a drawing of a fish I found on the internet. I didn't have time to actually draw my own fish, nor do I possess the skills to draw a fish that well. But th this is something I found on the internet and I thought it would work. And it's a nice, it's a nice alien fish. You can see it has three eyes and un some unique features like that. But I thought it would be relatively, relatively easy to start with a fish compared to some other animal because the fish, they don't have legs or anything like that. So they're, they're pretty simplistic overall compared to some other thing I could have made. So we're still in week one. I learned a bunch of new skills to help me with modeling and I guess I'll kind of go through them in this order. So the first one I learned was extrusion, which I will show you here. So basically this is a brand new project I have in Blender specifically for this video. If you go into edit mode, which you can switch down here, and you select like some of these vertices. Vertices are basically the points that make up a model because a computer can't have a model like a circle or any any shape without points. Even curves, some of them are made up of math, but those still have two points to define it. And all of those points are called vertices. So basically, if you select multiple vertices like this face here, and then you press E on your keyboard, you can extend it, and if you press Z, you'll have free you'll have free movement of your extension. But basically, this is called extruding, and it's the process of turning a 2D face or a single point and making it into a more 3D object. So you can even do that with single vertices here and just add like an edge or something. So that that's extrusion. Next, I have the mirror modifier, so I'll undo this. And if you go into the sidebar in Blender and go to Add Modifier and add Mirror, all of a sudden you'll find that everything you do, depending on which axis you select, I'll just select all of them so I don't have to worry about what I do, but anything you do on the axis that are selected will be mirrored on the other side, see? That makes it really easy for modeling creatures because if you want, if you have this really complex half of a model, you don't want to have to remake that on the other side, so this will automatically do it for you. Next is fill. So I'll just show you this here. I'm going to delete that face. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I left mirror on. So there's no, there's no face there, right? Well, if I select these vertices and press F, that face is back. So basically fill just allows you to add a face in an empty spot and that becomes useful if you want, you know, you have some areas made up of vertices that you need vertices to connect to make a face, you can just press, you can just press F and fill it instead of having to work around a bunch of other stuff. So then we have the split tool and there's a couple of different ones. There's knife, where if you press K and click on a vertice and then click on another vertice, it'll make a purple line, which then you can press enter and it'll automatically split that face into, right here I have two triangles. But there's another tool that's really handy. If you press control and R, it'll automatically show another, it'll show a purple line and if you kind of scroll, you can add multiple purple lines. And if you press enter, you can kind of alter where these lines are on your model. And if you press enter again, it'll slice your model. So those are some of the cut tools. And then you have the multi-resolution modifier. And this comes in handy after you've done the initial meshing, which is basically making a 
low poly or low polygon version of your model. And a polygon is just a shape made up of at least three or four vertices, like the planes that make up the cube. But the multi-resolution actually increases the number of polygons and smooths out your overall shape. So if I come in here and go into object mode, you can't do this in edit mode, but if you come to object mode and press subdivide, you'll all of a sudden see that it's not really a cube anymore. It's kind of like a low res sphere. And I'll just apply that here so you can see it. And there are more, there are more polygons and vertices and just everything than there was on this model before. And for the cube, it doesn't look very smooth because there were really only eight vertices anyway. But for higher poly, still low poly models, it makes them look much nicer than the way you initially meshed them. And then you have sculpting. And I'll just, I'll just subdivide this a few times here so we can have quite a few vertices to work with. But if you go into sculpt mode here, basically this allows you to alter your mesh as if it were some kind of a clay model. And I have uh, the mirror option on for sculpting, which will automatically mirror everything you do when you sculpt. And that is down here in the symmetry thing. But if I didn't have that, I could just sculpt on one side and it wouldn't do it on the other. But I usually leave symmetry on. But it basically just allows me to work with this model as if it were a clay, as if it were made of clay or some other malleable substance. So those are some of the skills I learned to help me with modeling. And then for the rest of week one and all the way throughout week three, I made this low, molly, uh, low poly, which I already told you that just means low polygon count, low poly model of my fish. And I will come over to this is kind of the high poly one that I'll show you later, but for now I'll show you the low poly one. And you can see it, you can see the edges on this fish of the polygons that I have. And if you go into edit mode for the fish, um, let me let me find it here. I have quite a few. I should probably keep this more organized. But there we go. So if you go into edit mode, you can see I have it mirrored on this side, like I showed you the mirror modifier. It makes it really easy. And you can tell that there are quite a few more polygons here than the cube, but in the long run, there isn't honestly all that many. So it's a relatively simplistic model of this fish. And that's what I spent the th uh, three weeks making. I honed my skills in making complex low poly models. And I used this concept art. I don't know, it's not showing up, but... Hmm. I don't know, but basically that concept art I showed you earlier would normally appear back here, and that's actually what allowed me to model with uh, model the fish. I was just able to look at the lines on the concept art and follow them to make the fish, but for some reason it's not showing up right now. So then. I use the multi-resolution modifier, which I showed you, and sculpting to make the model smooth and more detailed. And you'll also notice that if you come, I'll come over to my other layer with a smooth model. You'll, you'll also notice that this is, it almost looks like you can't see any shapes. It looks like it's actually an organic living creature here. Well, as living as this can be. But I'll show you, that's something called shade smooth, which is something I've actually known about for a while. So if I select this model and I'll, I'll come in here and set it to default, which is called shade flat, you'll see you can still kind of see the shapes there. It's a lot better than the low poly one, but you can still see the shapes. But if I come in here and do shade smooth, all of a sudden it looks a lot nicer. So that, that's shade smooth. I probably should have listed it up there earlier. But basically using multi-resolution sculpting and shade, smooth, shade smooth is what made this model look so nice and detailed and smooth and organic because I'm making an organic model. So for uh, my project plan review, I, I basically had planned to actually make two models, but in the end I only ended up making one. 
because I had based my progress off of my tutorial and eventually if you get really good at modeling most people can like make a mesh in one sitting but for me since I'm new to this it took me a whole lot longer and I wasn't spending very much time per session on actually doing it because of school and everything so yeah, it took me a lot longer, and in the end, I basically accomplished the first half of my project plan and not the second. In project overview, I learned not to estimate my progress based on the pace of my tutorial, which is why I was only able to accomplish the first half. I should be a little bit more forgiving with my schedule, and if I manage to finish my project plan, then I can branch out and do more. And then I didn't need too much problem solving this project. It was basically just use the skills to make a model. There weren't terribly many issues I had to run through, which is kind of unique for my projects. Most of them encounter some kind of problem. So it was a little bit of a breath of fresh air, not breath of fresh air, not to have any problems this time. And next time I wouldn't make my little poly model quite as detailed because you saw the multi-resolution modifier increases the polygon count and everything, which means I don't need to have quite as many polygons on the low poly model. But being a perfectionist, sometimes it's kind of like, ugh, I just have to make sure everything looks really nice before I can move on to the next step. But I just need to remember that I don't need quite as many polygons on the low poly one, and it'll still look fine in the end. And then my most successful moment was completing the low poly model because using multi-resolution and sculpting and all that, it honestly didn't take too long to finish that step. Making the low poly model took me the largest amount of time and that was the, the most technical I had to get throughout my whole project. So it was just a great accomplishment when I finished that. Well, that, that's the end of my project review. I hope you liked it. Maybe you can start making some of your own models in the future. Thank you.